raggy doll, raggy doll, dolls like you and me. Raggy doll, raggy doll, made him perfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the raggy doll and say I just don't care. Cause raggy doll, raggy doll, are happy just to be. Raggy doll, raggy doll. The Raggy Dolls were in London, staying with their good friend Ragamuffin, the travelling doll. Ragamuffin was living in the basement of an old derelict house near one of the main London railway stations. Well, what do you think of London? said Ragamuffin. Well, to be perfectly honest, we haven't seen very much of it yet, said Dotty. And what we have seen has been very scary, added Lucy. Not to mention all this noise said Princess. Just then, they heard the sound of fire engine bells and a police siren. Oh, I know it's not perfect, said Ragamuffin, but as you know, I never stay in one place for long. How do you manage not to be seen? asked Lucy. There are so many people about in London. Far too many, if you ask me, declared Sad Sack. Ah, yes, chuckled Ragamuffin. But they're all much too busy thinking about themselves to notice a little doll like me. But surely you still have to be extremely careful, said Princess. Ragamuffin shrugged. I've always got my coat, he said. And to demonstrate, he flopped down onto the floor with his tattered coat on top. He looked just like a pile of old rags. Ragamuffin lifted his head. See, if they don't take much notice of me, they certainly don't take any notice of a pile of rags. Hmm, said Dotty. It seems to me that if we want to go sightseeing, we all ought to wear rag coats. Ragamuffin shook his head. No, honestly, our only real problem is transport. London is a very big place. It would take us all day to walk to just one of the famous places. Oh dear, said Princess. It looks as if we shan't be seeing any of the sights after all. Ah said Ragamuffin. That depends on what you mean by sights. There's lots to see and do in London. In no time at all, the Raggy Dolls found themselves riding underneath a fruit barrow, being pushed along by a cheerful Cockney street trader, who kept shouting, Lovely ripe bananas! Come and get your lovely ripe bananas! Lovely ripe bananas! Come and get your lovely ripe bananas! Where's he taking us? said Lucy, finding London very strange indeed. You'll see, said Ragamuffin. Don't worry, it'll be fun. At least it's better than walking, thought Sad Sack. The barrow stopped at a street market in Old Covent Garden. Come with me, said Ragamuffin. He led the Raggy Dolls under a long line of market stalls, selling everything from T-shirts and comical baseball caps to books, old clocks, costume jewelry, and genuine antiques. At the end of the line of stalls was a large open space, and there a clown was entertaining the crowds. The Raggy Dolls watched as he juggled with oranges, apples, and bananas. The crowd cheered and applauded. So did the Raggy Dolls. He was very good. But then an important-looking businessman with a briefcase walked right in front of him. The clown quickly picked up a small suitcase and followed him, copying his walk and manner perfectly. When the crowd laughed, the businessman turned round, but the clown immediately pretended to be looking for something in his little suitcase. The poor businessman hurried off, very embarrassed. The clown waved goodbye to him and took out a model car remote controller. He quickly spotted a pigeon walking along, and he followed it here and there, pretending to control it by radio. It was very funny indeed, and everyone laughed and applauded until the pigeon flew up and settled with its friends. Come on, said Ragamuffin. There's lots more to see. They left the clown juggling Indian clubs and wobbling about on a unicycle. Ragamuffin led the Raggy Dolls back under the market stalls until they were close to the pavement and a pair of policemen's boots. Now what? whispered Dotty. We wait said Ragamuffin. 
Soon, a pair of expensive inflatable trainers walked up to the policeman's boots, and a large rucksack was dumped down beside them. Excuse me, please, said a foreign student. Can you tell me which way is the National Theatre? Certainly, said the policeman. Take the first left, then the second right, the left again, all the way down, turn right across Waterloo Bridge, and it's on your right, just past the Hayward Gallery and the Museum of the Moving Image. Well worth a visit, if you ask me. Thank you, thank you very much, said the student, picking up his rucksack once again, along with his new passengers. Peeping out of the rucksack, the Raggy Dolls had their first real sight of Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. I wonder what they do in there, thought Santa. Gracious me, whispered Lucy. I had no idea the River Thames was so wide. As soon as they could, the Raggy Dolls climbed out of the student's rucksack and Ragamuffin took them to a place where children practiced skateboarding. They hid behind a tree in a concrete tub and watched. The children were very good at it. They whizzed around, jumped and turned in midair, and did all kinds of tricks. It was brilliant. Back to Front was really impressed. Wow, I'd like to try that. As soon as I get home, I'm going to make myself a skateboard. M -m 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 me too, said Hi-Fi. Speaking of home, said Dotty, I rather think it's time we were going. I quite agree, said Princess. London is very exciting and all that, but it's so noisy, it's giving me a headache. While the children whizzed about on their skateboards, the Raggy Dolls decided that they would stay the night with Ragamuffin and catch the first train home in the morning. On the way back to Ragamuffin's basement, the Raggy Dolls saw some more sights of London. Streets full of cars and buses, bumper to bumper, making the air all smelly. A cyclist was knocked off his bike by a taxi. I didn't see him, protested the driver to the ambulance man. He come up on the inside. Don't worry, he'll be all right. Thanks to his helmet. And then there was the dust and litter. A whole newspaper blew along the pavement and knocked the raggy dolls over. At last they managed to hop onto a double-decker bus and hide under the stairs. It was dark by the time the Raggy Dolls got back to Ragamuffin's basement. He made them all a cup of cocoa. Phew! What a day! exclaimed Dotty. My feet are killing me! It is very tiring being a tourist, agreed Ragamuffin. I'm worn out too. It's been really good of you to show us around, said Lucy. And you mustn't think I'm ungrateful or anything, but I really can't wait to get home. Me too, said Sadzak even though the clown did make me laugh. And we did see Big Ben, said Back to Front. D -d -d Don't forget the skate boarding, said Hi-Fi. Outside, another police siren sounded. No one seemed to notice them anymore. Claude yawned. <gasps> oh, la la, he said. That reminds me, it is because of the yawning that we came to London in the first place. Absolutely, declared Princess. But after today, I promise never to be bored again. Everyone laughed, and soon they were all fast asleep, dreaming of being back in their nice, cosy, and peaceful reject bin. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made in perfectly. Do you know, I reckon that's about as accurate a portrayal of London as I think I've ever seen on television, because it is a lot of fun, but it is very noisy and smelly. Very interesting, that, wasn't it? I particularly enjoyed the bit at Covent Garden, where you do get very nice street entertainers like that. But yes, you can very easily be knocked off your bike as well. And they're back in the reject bin, well, fairly soon, let's see. Next, 
Watch the show. It's Mike and Angelo.